What is up YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today I bring you the 2021 Ford F-150 Lariat. does not make cars anymore in North America. They only build trucks and SUVs. So they've pretty much gone all in, put all the chips forward on trucks and SUVs. So when I think about the 2021 Ford F-150, I kind of think about when Porsche designs the 911 and redesigns it. Kind of looks the same to me. I think they'll only give us a full new redesign, like something that looks totally different when sales start to actually slump. But this is the number one selling pickup for the last 40 years. So, hmm, they might not even change this for the next 10 years. This might be the exact same F-150 10 years from now. I want to give a big shout out to the boys at Mount Bridges Ford for loaning us this 2021 F-150 Lariat. So they sold about a million of these F-Series trucks in North America last year. That's crazy. That's basically one every 30 seconds. So by the time you watch this whole video, because you're going to watch this whole video, they've sold about 50 of them. I'm very excited to do this review because trucks are an integral part of my life. Now I know that you guys see me driving supercars and all the rest of that stuff, but trucks are really the bread and butter of what I live for because in all my different businesses, trucks, and unfortunately I have to tell you guys this, that I drive a Ram. So I'm pretty excited to drive this thing to actually know the difference because my next truck might be one of these, just like you. So I wanted to get something that was really sort of affordable, and that's what this Lariat is. You see, you can get it in a Platinum, a Limited, a King Ranch, and as well the hybrid of those variants. Now, for me, it's about affordability, and how many of these are they gonna sell? And to me, the Lariat and probably the XLT will be the ones they'll sell the most, because who's gonna spend 80 to 90 grand on a truck? A few of you, but not all of you. This, like me, is what I'm looking at. So I've got two points for my Canadian friends. Here's the first one. The tax logs are geared for us to write off trucks more so than they are luxury product for this price point. You see, we just throw it in our corp, we spend 70K, we lease it, put it through our corporation, easy as that. Can't do that with a $70,000 BMW. And the second most important part is our exchange rate. Right now, we can drive one of these things cheap, almost free, and here's how. You see, Ford Canada cannot sell cars directly to Americans with a cheaper exchange rate. They need a guy like me as the middle guy. So what I do is I jump into one of these things, I drive for six months or a year, and guess what? Sell it back to the dealer and then get a new one and they flog that car to the US at a higher exchange rate. So for those of you that are interested in the finance world, you can hit up the description below. That is my new YouTube channel and follow me. Now back to the truck. So this all new F-150 has 11 different types of grills. It's got active air intake shutters. It's got military grade alloy panels. They've basically taken the old F-150, loved the way it looks, took it all apart, put it all back together with just better materials. They've got a few different designs. The LED headlights with this distinctive DRL. It's got dynamic headlights that follow. It's got auto high beams. It's also got six different engines you can buy in this thing. But I'm only gonna really focus on two of them. Let's check it out. So we're gonna talk about two engines. The first one being this in the Lariat. This is the three and a half liter V6 EcoBoost that makes 400 horsepower and 500 foot pounds of torque. And the only reason I bring up the second one is because people will say this needs a V8. So you can get a five liter that makes 400 horsepower, but doesn't make 500 foot pounds of torque. But the best part is you can get an array of engines, even the best engine, on the lowest trim. You see, most vehicles, you have to load them up in toys, in tech, just to get great motors or great drivetrains, but not in this. Yes, not in this. So no matter which F-150 you pick, you're always made it to a 10-speed transmission. Unless you get the hybrid, of course, then you get a 10-speed transmission designed for the hybrid. Now you can get the F-150 in lots of different lengths. You can obviously get them in lots of different boxes. This is obviously a Super Crew, but you can get them in a Super Cab, and you can also get them in a regular version. So you can get an 8-foot box 
in the regular and the super cab. And you can get a, can you get an eight foot box in a super crew? No, you cannot. You can only get a five and a half foot box and a six and a half foot box. So if you want all the space inside, you cannot get an eight foot box. You can only get a five and a half or a six and a half. And in the rest, you can get the eight foot box. Hope that made sense. Now this Laird has 20 inch wheels. If you get some of the higher trims, you can get them in 22 inch wheels, but it's a truck. So 20s for me are perfect. Now the key has something called auto detect when I walk up to it. Now, because we've been around this car a few times shooting this thing, it's not gonna work. But normally when I walk up to it, that happens. And if it doesn't happen, I got that little button that I can press, that I can step in and get in. And the cool part about it is that I don't have to walk up to it and then wait for it to come. The key detects it, I roll up, it comes down, I step in. You know, I'm talking to you, GM. And we've got the back of the vehicle now. So let's talk about the side, the back end of it. And I'll tell you why this is important. This has a 38 gallon fuel tank, or for us Canadians, it's 136 liters. That is a lot of fuel that goes in this thing, which means you actually have to get out to put gas in it. And that's the one thing that bothers me about cars with small fuel tanks. Getting out to put gas in it is so annoying. Like, I hate doing that. Don't you? Now, this thing does have a power tailgate. You simply hit the button twice, it's power, but it's not only power down, it's also power up. And I'll show you that in a second, but there is some LED lights in here, so I simply just hit this button here and it lights up the bed. Now I apologize for this car being dirty because there's a storm outside, so you just hit this button again here. Yes. So sometimes, Pickup trucks are defined by their tailgate. Let's see if this is one of them. This pad over here, or desk if you'd like to call it, is made out of a nylon glass fiber material. Now, it does have two bottle openers, one here and one here, and they can also be used as tie downs. Now, it has this, so if I wanna get in the back, I can just simply slide this off, slide that, use this handle, come down, sort of step in, come back, and come out. So as you guys seen in the Sierra video, very similar to this, get in, get out. Solid, strong. But there is something kind of unique about this, and that is this. This can be used as a work desk. Now, you have a space for your drink, your cell phone, and these are the wrong clamps, but just trying to prove a point here that you can put a clamp clamp to hold this. And you can actually use it to cut. Yeah, awesome. Because it has the power to cut. You see, when you get the hybrid version, you can actually run a generator on this thing. A generator, that's how much power it produces. It produces 7,300 kilowatts of power when you get the hybrid version. But this has two kilowatts of power. You see in the hybrid, if you don't get the generator, you get 2.4 kilowatts. So really hybrid guys, you're not getting much more unless you opt for the generator that makes 7.2 kilowatts. And, in, and that thing for my line of work is awesome because you can run a washing machine. So from jumping from rental to rental, I can run a washing machine, I can check stoves. And for my roofing company, I can check hot seam welders. It runs that much power but it comes at a price point. So it really depends on how are you gonna use this truck. If you're gonna use it, you need that extra power in the back to have the generator. Super unique idea, but are you gonna use it? If you're not gonna use it, then don't buy the hybrid. So I'm in the back of the Ford F-150 here, and this sunroof is magical. It is massive, this twin panoramic sunroof. So in the back here, it doesn't feel claustrophobic. There's obviously a ton of legroom. Um, so in terms of how it compares to the Ram that I have, it's pretty much very similar, except this sunroof makes a massive difference. It just opens us up. Um, I also do like the fact that they figured out how to get rid of cheap looking plastic. They've sort of put this like jean type material here. It doesn't feel like jean, but it actually looks exactly like it. And it's kind of different and unique. So that's a good piece. As far as everything else go, um, I always try to find this is that in the back here, I'm always running really long two by four. So if you have a 12 foot two by four um, or a 10 footer of any sort, I feel like this back little 
headdress needs to come out and that's across the board. I just like the fact that you have to actually put something here and they always have this rear headrest. Annoying. Maybe someone will figure out that one day. Everything else is pretty straightforward. Now, the Lariat doesn't have sort of a lockable box underneath here. So if you get some of the higher models, you can get a box that's lockable underneath here so you can store stuff. That way, if you have anything that's expensive, any tools, you can actually hide them under this seat. Now, as far as creature comforts go, there is pockets in the back here to store all your stuff. There is bottle holders. This does have the awesome Bang & Olufsen, which 19 speakers. So this sound system is magical. It is loud, clear, and everything you expect out of a Bang & Olufsen. I'll tell you something really funny about the front seats with the Bang & Olufsen, but in the back, you do have heated seats in the back here. You also have three types of voltage output. So you have your traditional plug that most trucks have, but you also have a USB, a USB-C, and a cigarette lighter out. So pick your three because you'll always have something to plug into. I will say these back seats are more comfortable than my Ram. Not that I sit in the back of the Ram very often, but this is more comfortable. The front seat of a Ford F-150. All right. This is a big deal for me. Guys, I mean, the last time I owned an F-150 was like in 2006. And since then, I've owned pretty much everything except the new F-150. As I said, I drive a new Ram right now, and I can tell you that the seats are just softer in the F-150s. The steering wheel just feels softer. This screen is massive. Now, it's about time for it that you've come to the table with a 12-inch screen. This thing is massive. Uh, did I say that already? Yeah, check it out. It's huge, it's split screen. But the clarity is really, really sweet. Now, I was telling you something really funny about these seats. This has speakers in the headrest, similar to this car. Now the outside hasn't changed a lot, but the inside has changed a ton. These screens, as I mentioned, this 12 inch screen is massive, but this center screen for the driver is beautiful. It's got this display when you get into it that shows you a full out movie. It also has different drive modes that populates up here and it looks sweet. It just really brings it up to speed. And that was really lacking in the Fords that the other manufacturers pushed forwards. <coughs> Ram. <coughs> Ram. And they've done a really good job. It's really clean. I like the way they have it here. They've got a pro trailer system here. It's got really nice features. It does have three memory seat. It does have, oh, cool. Look at this. It's got lights that I can pick on the left and the right. So you know how you have side lights in cars when you're turning left and right, the light comes on on both sides? In this case, you can press the left and the right mirror and the light will shoot out. So that's pretty cool. It's got a full 360 light system for the outside. So you never need to bring a flashlight because everything is here. Push button, light. Push button, light. Awesome. Now there is some gimmicky stuff. This shifter being one. You see this shifter is power operated and you hit the button and it goes away. Now this is really designed for when you have the center console that can come out like a table. And it's really designed for people to eat or work because people really live in their trucks, especially guys that work 13, 14 hours a day, they're always living in their trucks. But when you don't have the center console like this, this is just your typical, why is this going down? Another innovative feature is they have two glove boxes. Push the butuno and there we go, it opens upper and lower. It also doesn't have a 360 camera, but that doesn't matter because look how large this rear camera is. Yeah, Ian, you have beautiful eyes, man. Look how large this backup camera is. It is massive, huge backup camera. But the two main reasons one would buy anything more than a Lariat is for the center desk and for these seats that fully recline that become beds. Now I know that's crazy. They actually become a full out bed. Yeah, COVID. Dinner, a movie, and a bed. Hmm. Ford, you're thinking, but let's take this for a drive and see what's different. So I'm in a 2021 Ford F-150 and look at this backup camera. Look how massive it is. It's huge. One thing I will say, this shifter is built for construction hands. You see these hands? Yeah, not construction hands. These is huge, massive. So <laughs> these sort of side steps are an addition from factory and I will say they're noisy when they go in and out. 
but there's a lot of room here. This is a bigger cabin than the Ram that I currently drive. It's just more airy and it's definitely more comfortable. These seats are softer by far, they're softer. Suspension though, a little bit different. It's a softer suspension and it takes, easiest way to put this is it, it doesn't feel as connected to the road, if that makes any sense. I feel less connected to the road in this than I do in the, the Ram, whether it be, and mine's not a sport model, mine's just a regular model like this. So I can compare them sort of side to side. This is also faster. This three and a half liter motor is faster than, than the Hemi. Oh yeah, this definitely pulls harder than the Hemi. There's no question of that. Initial thoughts as I drive this thing, this center focus display is fantastic. I really like how they stepped out of the box and they give you RPM in decimal places. That is so awesome that it's just cool to see that the big number of what RPM you're in is lit up right here. It's not like a gauge that you have to see it or a number that's constantly moving. It's just a clean number that stays there and I really like it. And they're nice and big. Now I know some people wanna have the center say the speed, but this is perfect. I like it. I like it a lot. Steering wheel is just as meaty. This one seems to have a sort of a, a maybe a, a little bit thicker than the Ram. As I said, the shifter is definitely clunkier, but I think that's always been the case with Ford. They've always had these really clunky shifters. So you have different drive modes in this F-150 and it really, really shows when you sort of switch over for them. So there's sport, which is the far left, and it's like a whole movie is coming on. And as soon as you put it into sport, it goes into four by four. So I'm gonna get out of that. Wow, these are awesome gauges. Nice and white with red. Oh, this is beautiful. Really, really beautiful gauges. Best looking gauges that I've seen in a truck, that's for sure. Yeah, it's nice. That's really engaging. This center display is really engaging, but the steering is not engaging. The steering actually feels the opposite of engaging. It's very soft. It's not direct. I don't really feel that I'm engaged with the car with the steering. The Ram is more direct feel, if that makes any sense. Um, so I think from like zero, I guess the best way to put it is from say zero to about a hundred kilometers an hour, this steering and feeling is better. After a hundred, I kind of want to be a little bit more in control. And I feel like after that point, I'd want to be in one that is more road holding, or at least feels that way to me. But in terms of performance, this thing's got a good pull, man. <laughs> All the cameras are shaking in here because this thing's getting pulled back hard. It is nice. This is a great motor. I was always in love with the Hemi. They just did a really good job marketing that engine. But driving here, I was actually driving mine and Ian was behind me, tailing me, and he was pulling pretty hard. I couldn't pull from him. This thing goes. Three and a half liter V6 versus V8 5.3. Yeah. Carbonium, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This is a. This is a really good competitor. <laughs> this is a really good competitor against the Ram. I mean, my visually, my eyes are in love here. There's a lot of great pieces. This is a great system. Now, the Ram also has something similar, but it's not sideways. It's actually vertical, and the. The clarity of the screen is nicer, and the data that I see is nicer. It's very Tesla-ish. As far as the HVAC, it is very small. Uh, there's no HVAC controls in this actual system. It all actually is done through this, through this. There's no integration that I see between the HVAC controls and the actual infotainment. So they are fairly small, but they actually do have something cool. There is an auto button and they do have three increments, just like the Kios we reviewed. They have three increments of auto and I really like that because then you can just set the temperature you want, leave it, and then you, it, that dictates this fan speed. So really cool, really, really cool. It's got really good visibility all the way around. This segment is tough. It's really hard to pick a truck and that's probably why they've just all have their own thing. Like I remember that the Sierra is very stiff, like the suspension is stiff, everything's really truck-like and there's no softness about it. Everything was hard. There's nothing really soft. The Ram's kind of in the middle, some softness, but it's fairly sportier. And the Ford has always been soft in terms of steering and soft in terms of suspension. They've always sort of lagged behind with tech, but now the tech is like futuristic. This is a futuristic driver's display. 
There's no doubt about that. The one thing I wish that all manufacturers would change or at least add to is the heated steering wheel. We need to have increments of heated steering wheel. Why can't we have one, two, and three heated steering wheels? Because when it gets to a certain temperature, it's too hot and then it starts getting itchy and then you're like, okay, shut it off. And then it gets cool again and you put it back on. Like, give me a heated steering wheel that is one, two, or three increments. That would be sweet. This is a really good truck, guys. This is a really good truck. It is definitely quieter than the Ram that I have. It is quieter. There is no doubt it is quieter. Brakes are a little bit softer. I think it's just softness. I think that softness is the cell with the Ford. It's a soft truck. So if you're looking for something and you don't know what to pick and you like the outside look, but all you're missing is the tech in the new F-150, then this has it hands down. This is everything you need. There's nothing here that you don't have. Well, unless you want wireless charging, then you gotta step one level up, or the massage seats, or the flat table, or the locking under the rear bench. Then you have to step up. Or the American flag on the side of this dash. Then you gotta step up. But if you're happy with everything I just showed you today, then the Lariat is for you. So I hope you guys like this review on this 2021 Ford F-150. I will get my hands on a hybrid to do it at a later date. But for now, hope you guys like this review. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.